Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are having a great night out there so far. And I've had a great day and a great work week as we're, uh, we're all working our way on through it. I got you a big update on the tropics tonight. And what we're going to do is get about as detailed as we possibly can on what is Invest 91L as of right now. Has a pretty high chance of developing within the next uh, several days and most likely will take the name Carl. And uh, I'm saying most likely because I have some pretty high confidence that this is going to be a name storm in the Caribbean. And the reason it's not going to take the name Julia is because it looks like, and it's actually forecasted to do so, to, uh, there's a system out in the Eastern Atlantic that most likely will take the name Julia and is actually forecasted to do so by the National Hurricane Center. And that is actually Tropical Depression 12 as of right now. So we'll see if this 91L, this Invest 91L will become Tropical Depression 13. And I'm not concerned in the short term, but I am a little bit worried about what this could potentially do in the long term. And, uh, you know, it looks like it's just going to stare down areas of Central, Central America. And we certainly need to watch out all of the Caribbean and definitely need to watch the Gulf of Mexico just in case, even though the pattern does not support a curve into the Gulf of Mexico, but things can change. That's still kind of far out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to really break this down for you guys about as, about as best as we can. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. Hit me up on Twitter. It's a great way to follow along, especially when things get active. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about, pray over. Please uh, put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. And certainly uh, pray for me to get through this video, guys, because and my wife could uh, can be the voice of it. I've had to start over this video about 30 times tonight. Uh, I just cannot get rolling for some reason. So if I stutter, if I skip a word, if I just sound mumble, if I'm mumbling, uh, it's because I've repeated some of these same sentences over and over again. But I'm doing my best, guys. So let's get rolling. Latest update from the 5 p.m. update. So you'll have an 8 p.m. update here in the next 45 minutes to an hour. You got 12 out here. This is forecast to become Julia. And then you got a 70% chance for this to develop in the next five days um, in this area right here. This, this is Invest 91L. So it's most likely going to develop sometime somewhere I would say in the central to western Caribbean. We need to watch this. And I think by the time we get to the 8 p.m. update here in about 45 minutes, this will get updated to probably an 80% or 90% chance. But it doesn't change anything right now. Chances are high, literally, that this is going to develop. A close look at this, which is Tropical Depression 12. And like I said, this will most likely be Tropical Depression 13 and probably in the next, I would say, 24 to 48 hours. But uh, this is forecast to become Tropical Storm Julia, but not bother anybody. In fact, by the time we get to Thursday, it'll probably weaken back into a depression. Let's take a look at Invest 91L. It's a very isolated, compact system. They have not found a low-level circulation in it as of right now, but that could change sometime overnight. Popping off some pretty intense convection right now so it's doing pretty well and it's going to enter an environment in the caribbean that's definitely favorable for development now you know i talked a couple videos ago how a lot not just me but a lot of people were confused at why the models were lagging on showing development with this and the reason being is because once this gets into the caribbean i mean the the environment is just as favorable as the environment was with ian so I don't see how this doesn't pop off into a hurricane once it gets into the Caribbean. And, you know, once these systems do get into the Caribbean, become a hurricane, they're going to hit somebody. And so that is the concern with this. So it's looking like a healthy tropical wave tonight out there uh, just east of the Windward Islands will start affecting you guys within the next uh, 24 hour, tw within the next 24 to 48 hours for sure. Another way to look at this is this is uh, Zoom Earth. I love looking at this. It shows cities, con it shows the continents, it shows the countries, it shows the states once you're in the U.S. You see this big area right here, kind of this huge uh, circle, if you will. This is that area that has a 70% chance for this right here to develop sometime in the next five days. So. You look at um, uh, Honduras, Nicaragua. If I you know mess up one of these uh, names of these countries, I do apologize. But just you need to pay attention in Central America in general, guys, and and even you folks in Jamaica, the Cayman Islands. This could change. This could wobble back and forth. So, but uh, this is certainly wanting to stare down Central America sometime in the next week. 
uh, you could expect maybe some impacts, but we're just not 100% sure um, yet. So let's take a look at the GFS and what the latest GFS shows. We'll start this off Thursday morning. What we'll do, we'll go over some model guides, take a look in some ensembles, and then the environment that could produce a strengthening scenario in the Caribbean. So we'll keep this rolling here. You don't see much, but here it is. Here's that piece of energy moving in right here. It starts to get into central areas of the Caribbean, uh, probably just southeast of the, bah of uh, not the Bahamas, I'm sorry, Jamaica, around uh, the later part of this coming weekend. All of a sudden, this begins to strengthen quickly. Now, the latest GFS is pretty far north compared to other model guidance. But at this point, around next, I would say uh, about seven days, six to seven days from now, this is a hurricane. This would probably be Hurricane Carl, most likely, most likely. And then here it goes. It's jogging a little bit almost west-northwest, which we do not want this getting into the Gulf of Mexico. And here it goes. It heads right into the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, Belize. Um, if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. Belize, Belize, Belize. I think it's Belize. Um, it heads and affects you guys. I've had a couple comments from that area. Uh, we certainly need to watch out for that area. This could definitely, and it's looking like just one of those tropical systems that could affect Central America in general. But Please do not look at this and be scared out your mind, guys. This looks like a worst case scenario. But one thing I do say about the GFS, the GFS shows the idea of what can happen if you do get something together in the Caribbean. I think the environment um, will be very favorable for some kind of at least moderate strengthening of a tropical system in the Caribbean. I really don't think there's anything holding it back. I really don't. There's going to be a lot of moisture. It's going to have a a massive moisture environment. The upper wind pattern will be very supportive for tropical development and the sea surface temperatures, of course, in this area are very warm, just like they are anytime uh, around this area this time of the year. So, you know, this is one scenario. This is a bad scenario. We don't want this for the, uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize. We don't want this for you guys at all, but we certainly need to watch. Now, you look at the European. What does the European show? Um, same kind of deal, but it does not show that quick of strengthening that quick. So we'll stop this around Saturday morning. How you see this L right here in the middle of the Caribbean. Um, and really all it does is it plows it right into uh, Nicaragua and then Honduras area. Let's make sure I don't get these two. Yeah, Nicaragua. It kind of follows the same route as what the National Hurricane Center basically is saying. And this little, this is not a cone of uncertainty or anything, but an area to watch out for development. And uh, basically the European does not show this developing, but it's hard to believe this because I just don't know how, if you get a piece of energy in the Caribbean, how this doesn't develop, at least into a tropical uh, storm. But this would have a tropical storm making landfall somewhere in Central America, but a little bit further south into Nicaragua. So we need to watch out for this area. This would cause a lot of flooding with the higher mountain peaks in this area. The Canadian. What does the Canadian show? The Canadian kind of likes the idea of what the GFS is showing. And by the time we get into uh, Saturday morning, you have a tropical storm well south of Jamaica, right in the middle of kind of the south central areas of the Caribbean. And then this takes it right into Nicaragua and Honduras as probably a Category 1 hurricane. So, likes the idea of this crossing the entire Caribbean and then affecting Central America. And then it kind of gets back over waters and then hits Belize as maybe a, um, you know, a depression or a tropical storm. So, guys, I will get the uh, punctuation of, um, of uh, sounding out these country names a little bit better in time. Um, I've never been great at sounding out things. Uh, so, uh, uh, bear with me, guys. It's it's all in good spirits and it's not intentional. I know you guys know that, but I'm not going to take offense to you guys uh, definitely correcting me in the comments. As, as long as you're not rude about it, I mean, there's no reason to be rude about it. But anyways, um, the icon, what does the good old icon show that, you know, fished out the scenario with Ian hitting the Carolina coastline? Icon likes the idea of this developing somewhat, but takes more of that European route where it makes landfall as a tropical storm sometime later this weekend as a uh, tropical storm into uh, Nicaragua. So we need to watch out for that area. The ensemble support from the European 
shows anywhere from a, a hit to Nicaragua all the way up to Belize. So we need to watch Yucatan Peninsula, this entire area of Central America it needs to pay attention. And the reason I'm saying this is because a scenario like the GFS is not out the question. You know, one thing I mentioned, like I said, about two or three nights ago in a video, I said that I'm I, that models could suddenly latch on to the idea of something developing in the Caribbean. And they did that. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but it, I mean, everybody saw it. I mean, it just, it, 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 we were all perplexed that the models were not latching on to the idea of uh, this piece of energy developing once it got into the Caribbean and certainly is now. It's warm sea surface temperatures. Uh, this is in Celsius, but in Fahrenheit, this 29, 30 degrees. Just think of this as temperatures in the low to as high as the upper 80s in Fahrenheit in this area. So a little pocket of even warmer water right here into the mid to upper 80s. So sea surface temperatures are certainly favorable for rapid intensification. Let's hope that doesn't happen. And then you look at the upper, upper wind patterns right here. There is absolutely no shear down here bothering this system. A little tut tries to fly in. And I honestly think this little tut right here, you see this little bowing out right here. This is like basically what you call an, um, an upper level low, a tropical upper level low, if you will. This might hinder this with some shear and some dry air initially in the Eastern Caribbean. Sometimes we call this the graveyard of the Caribbean um, because a lot of times a tut likes to come down and really uh, kill any tropical development, which we like to see. But once it gets into the Central Caribbean, kind of like what Ian did, um, all bets are off. I really think this could really intensify and this becomes a, an environment where this storm really starts breathing and outflow develops and we need to watch out for any kind of rapid intensification. So, um, you know, going back on Zoom Earth, watch out. You need to keep an eye on this, even if you're in Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and even, you know, up into Cuba, uh, Cancun, you know, the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, you folks need to watch uh, Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize, you certainly, uh, Guatemala, you know, also, because obviously these heavier rains will move into this area. You need to watch in these areas um, of the Caribbean and just of the world that we need to watch for this because I don't see how anything couldn't rapidly develop in this area with the environment that's going to be in place. You know, so we need to watch this. Hopefully my delivery will not be a sloppy in the morning, guys. I'll give you a big update on this. Um, but for you folks in the U.S. wondering, okay, well, we're good, do not, do not let your guard down in the Gulf of Mexico because if you get a stronger system earlier on like the GFS, it could try to move a little bit more north in latitude. So we'll watch this. But uh, this will be a big storyline, especially for our folks in Central America, and we definitely, definitely need to pay attention to this. So um, you guys have a great night. Sorry about the sloppy delivery. Um, if it came out sloppy or if I butchered any country names, I'll get better, guys. Uh, just uh, having to start over about 25 to 30 times in the beginning of this video really killed the momentum of uh, talking in this video. But anyways, you guys have a great night. We'll get better. God bless all y'all, and I'll talk to y'all in the morning.